All right, guys, how's it going? In my last video, we were one day away from AMD's Vega reveal. They had set up a website with a countdown timer counting down to the Vega architecture preview. Now, it's safe to say that this maybe didn't go quite how many people had anticipated, and I for one was expecting a little bit more than a handful of very short videos, but there was at least one or two very important pieces of information given, one in particular. Before I get to that, I'm just going to explain how I analyse these things. It's really quite simple for me, I just use logic, and I look at what we're being told. If you also remember, at the start of the last video, I talked about how AMD told me not to release any information on the leaked Vega performance. What happened with that was two websites, PC Games Hardware and Golem.de, two German websites, managed to find the performance of Vega while running Doom on Vulkan at 4K. What they discovered was that Doom was running around 66 frames per second on Vega at 4K resolution, and they also tested the performance of Doom on the GTX 1080 at the same spot. And right up here, we can see that it is running at 60 frames per second, so the Vega sample that they saw was 10% faster. Now, they also said that it was running on very early drivers and also inside a very small case with the vents taped up so that nobody could see exactly what was inside. What is possibly even more interesting to me was the Vega sample only showed a VRAM amount of 8 gigabytes of VRAM. We can clearly see here the VRAM at 8 gigabytes, and looking at the GTX 1080, we can see the same thing. So basically speaking, from this information, it was pretty clear to me that what we were talking about here was the small Vega graphics card. Now, we've known for months that there will be two Vega graphics chips, and one will obviously be bigger than the other, just like with Polaris 10 being bigger than Polaris 11. The same case will apply for Vega. And to me, this was clearly the smallest Vega, because at only 10% faster than the GTX 1080, and with only 8 gigabytes of VRAM, that's what the logic says. Vega will be released around the middle of 2017, and for me it's pretty clear that AMD would not release a flagship GPU in 2017 with only 8 gigabytes of VRAM. They got bitten pretty hard with Fury X, which only had 4 gigabytes, and they've already released Polaris 10 with 8 gigabytes, and most of the mid-range to high-end graphics cards right now have 8 gigabytes. So it just makes sense that the largest Vega graphics card would have 16, or even more. Now we also had the comments from Lisa Su saying that Vega was very, very competitive. So this is all starting to make perfect sense. The smallest Vega GPU, which I reckon would be just slightly larger than the GTX 1080, would also be very slightly faster, maybe 10-15% faster, with the larger Vega GPU being quite a lot faster. But now I'm not so sure about that. Now CES has just finished, held at the start of every year, and obviously AMD were there, as was Nvidia, Intel, and anybody else who is anybody in technology. And AMD had a demo of Ryzen and Vega playing Star Wars Battlefront on the indoor map. Now once again, this is 4K resolution and it looks very smooth, Think Computers took a video of this, and I'll leave the link to the video in the description, check it out for the full video. It ran very smoothly, at almost all times, however there was one spot where it took a little dip, down to 57 frames per second. Now, that could be anything, maybe it was just streaming in textures or something like that. At all other times, the frame rate was locked to 60 frames per second. But again, we know that Star Wars Battlefront isn't that demanding on hardware. Even though it's a great looking game, it is very well optimised and runs pretty well on the latest hardware. Now it wasn't long before examples of the GTX 1080 running the same demo appeared on YouTube, and I left a comment in one of the videos asking for better details, to which the uploader obliged, and running through it we can see that the GTX 1080 was capable of maintaining around 60 frames per second. Now this was a GTX 1080 at 2 gigahertz, and also an i5 4690K overclocked to 4.4 gigahertz. So it's a pretty hefty overclock, at least on the graphics card, but it was running quite smoothly around 60 frames per second. Now the AMD sample was locked with VSync at 60, so we don't know exactly how fast it was running. But remember the dip down to 57? That sort of tells me that maybe it's running around the same performance above 60 frames per second, but not an awful lot above 60 frames per second. In other words, very much like an overclocked GTX 1080. The evidence is mounting of the Vega GPU being around 10% faster 
than the GTX 1080. Next up is a Doom demo from AMD themselves. Once again run at 4K ultra settings, but with no VSync on this time, so we get to see the true frame rate. Now this is AMD simply saying, this is as good as Vega gets in Doom. And what's more, at the beginning, AMD's marketing guy quite clearly states that this is the flagship Vega GPU. Flagship is very clear, this is the fastest Vega GPU. Now we can see that Doom is running around 60 to 70 frames per second, which is maybe not quite what we were hoping for. And once again we started to see demos of the GTX 1080 running Doom at 4K on the same map. Again highly overclocked GTX 1080s, but the performance was even better than what we saw with Vega. Again we have to say here that Vega appears to be performing around about 10% faster than the GTX 1080, and this time coming directly from AMD, they are telling us that this is the Vega flagship. But what about this 8 gigabytes of VRAM? That simply doesn't make sense. Why would they do that? It was the 8 gigabyte of VRAM which really led me to believe that this had to be the small Vega. And of course the fact that the performance at only 10% faster than the GTX 1080 is really not that impressive for a mid-2017 enthusiast level graphics card. So what is that all about? Well, I think I've figured it out. What you're looking at is Big Vega. You can see here the large rectangle is the Vega GPU itself, and up at the top is the HBM memory, of which there are only two stacks. Now the website Video Cards made a nice comparison against some other GPUs. Over on the left here we can see Fiji, that is your Fury line of cards, massive GPU 601 square millimeters, and here we can clearly see 1, 2, 3, four stacks of generation 1 HBM. Next up is Pascal P100, Nvidia's mammoth 610 square millimeter GPU. This is the one that they use in the professional segment with four stacks of HBM2. We can also see here that HBM2 is quite a bit bigger than HBM1. The third GPU is GP102. This is the latest Pascal Titan X, and it's quite a bit smaller than the other two. And finally we have Vega with its two stacks of HBM2 and a die size somewhere in between GP102 and these other two mammoth GPUs. By my reckoning, we're around about 500 square millimeters here. So certainly closer to GP102 than the other two. But when I saw this, I realized that there isn't really any room left for Vega to grow. On the SK Hynix website, they have this image of HBM2. Now these numbers here are in gigabits, not gigabytes. So divide by eight. And right now you get two cores or two gigabytes or four core, four gigabytes. HBM2 stacks. So the Vega GPU will be using two stacks of these for a total of eight gigabytes. Eight gigabyte stacks are coming, but they will be very expensive right now, and we may only see it in the professional segment. But with this package, with these two HBM2 stacks, the only way to get 16 gigabytes of VRAM is by using two eight gigabyte stacks, which simply are not available in enough quantities right now. And here's the thing, if there was a bigger Vega GPU, it would almost certainly use four stacks, the same as Fury X, the same as GP100. But simply adding another two stacks is going to increase the die size to somewhere near 600 mm square anyway, because it would require extra memory controllers on the other side. AMD knows that eight gigabytes of VRAM will be treated the same way in the press as the four gigabyte Fury X got treated. They know that eight gigabytes of VRAM will be slated as insufficient for an enthusiast level graphics card. So what they have done instead is rebrand the HBM memory as a high bandwidth cache. Now, this is kind of complicated and it's obviously very new and it is really, really nice technology. So let's take a look at another video that AMD released during the Vega architecture preview. Anybody who's shopped for a GPU knows that you look at the amount of frame buffer or graphics memory or VRAM that the GPU has. If you're a game developer, uh, that's important because you have to fit all of the data for the game that you want to render into that amount of memory. And that of course puts a constraint on how detailed your, your games can be. You have to put all of your polygons and textures and shaders into that space. With Vega, we've uh, changed the whole way that that operates by introducing a new technology that we call a high bandwidth cache. So the idea there is that instead of having all of the data for your game having to be stored in this dedicated memory, we can actually stream in the data we need from system memory or even an SSD on demand. And a controller that we have on the GPU make sure that even when we're streaming this data in, 
the GPU never has to stall and stop rendering, which can cause stuttering and make a game unplayable. So effectively, we've broken through this limit where you are no longer limited by the amount of graphics memory you have on the chip. You can effectively address, instead of a few gigabytes of graphics memory, up to hundreds of terabytes, and it's only limited by the amount of memory or storage that you attach to your system. One of the great things about the, the way we've designed Vega with its high bandwidth cache and high bandwidth controller is that uh, rather than requiring developers to um, intelligently manage where they put different resources and what goes into graphics memory and what gets stored elsewhere, um, we're for the first time able to do this automatically. So that really simplifies uh, you know, their, their path to creating you know, huge game worlds with huge amounts of content. AMD enabling today, inspiring tomorrow. Now, if you've just watched that and got the feeling that AMD is once again inspiring tomorrow, a bit more than they are enabling today, then you're in pretty good company because this is what AMD appears to have been doing for years. Graphics Core Next was clearly years ahead of the competition. Stuff like asynchronous compute, which NVIDIA still hasn't really got properly in their own GPUs. High bandwidth memory, clearly superior to GDDR memory. And now we have a high bandwidth cache, which is solving a memory problem which may or may not be a huge issue. I'm not sure about that. It certainly looks like great technology, especially if you're a developer. Having all of this managed automatically is a very big thing. But in the end, what we care about is performance. And looking at these Doom numbers, 20% faster than Fury X, maybe 30%, that is simply not good enough. One year later, just about beating out the GTX 1080, a much, much smaller GPU, with this large HBM2 laden GPU. This is simply not good enough performance one year later. In actual fact, it looks a little bit like Fermi. When Nvidia released their Fermi architecture six months later, with higher power draw and slightly more performance than the much smaller AMD 5870, it got pilloried in the press, justifiably so. I'm sure we all get it by now that AMD is consistently pushing the envelope in terms of technology, but they also need to be fast. And this is where the problem lies. This high bandwidth controller, high bandwidth cache, may well be taking up a lot of die space. Die space that should be given over to stuff like shaders to make your graphics cards faster. I'm pretty sure you would sell more graphics cards if they were just faster than the competition. I honestly don't know what to make about it. There are mixed messages coming out of AMD. They're saying it's hugely competitive, but that can mean a lot of things. It doesn't look very competitive in terms of performance per area. That is performance per millimeter. At around 500 millimeter square with HBM2 and only just about beating out GP104, the GTX 1080, that is not competitive by any metric that I understand. It's fair enough to say that drivers are very immature at this stage. And you may believe that Doom is best case scenario, but in actual fact, it almost certainly isn't. Doom is a very good game for AMD because the Doom developers have incorporated asynchronous compute and shader intrinsics on the AMD hardware. Presumably, they have not done this with Vega yet, so there will be more performance. But let's just say another 10-20% for drivers it's still not gonna be faster than GP102, the Titan X. And even if it does somehow beat out the Titan X, we already know that the Titan X is not even the full GP102. So Nvidia can go and do another 780 Ti and release the full GPU if Vega does beat it due to driver improvements. It's the same old story. How many times is AMD going to run through this same story? What looked very promising to me was basically gone in one day. If AMD is saying that this is the best performance from the flagship Vega, then we simply have to take that at face value. There is no reason for them to say this unless it is the case. So for me, they are managing expectations here by giving us the exact performance of the big Vega GPU. And it is not that much faster than the GTX 1080. There is no reason for them to lie about this. Why would they tell us that unless it were true? If they had a much faster graphics card, they should have shown it. They would have shown it. That is exactly what would have stopped people from buying even more NVIDIA graphics cards. But that is not what they showed. People are not buying Fury X in large numbers 
and Vega will be faster and more expensive, so they're not harming their own sales. Simply put, what it comes down to is, this is the performance of Vega, and it is not really good enough as far as I'm concerned. Thankfully, the same does not appear to be the case with Ryzen, but I'll talk about that in a future video. I'll catch you later, guys.